Regular viewers of the How to Medicare channel know that this channel is all about increasing medical knowledge, because educated people make healthier decisions, and that's my personal mission as a medical doctor. Through this vision, I made countless of medical videos on medical diseases, their symptoms, and their solutions. This is important. However, sometimes it's also important to celebrate life successes and implement a glass half full kind of approach. And that's why I thought you might find today's video very interesting, as it focuses on medical science which shows that you're actually in good health. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. Now let's get learning. So let's start off with the most important indicators of good health, your vital signs. And these include your breathing rate, your blood pressure, your pulse and your body's temperature. Your body temperature varies depending on your gender, physical activity, fluid consumption, the time of the day and in women the stage of the menstrual cycle. In general, your body's temperature will range from 36.1 degrees Celsius upwards of 37.5 degrees of Celsius. Blood pressure is the force with which your blood pushes against the walls of your blood vessels. This pressure is high when your heart contracts, which is called systolic blood pressure, and it's low when your heart relaxes, which is called diastolic blood pressure. Normally, your systolic blood pressure should be less than 120 millimeters of mercury, and your diastolic blood pressure should be less than 80 millimeters of mercury. Next up is your heart rate. A resting heart rate should range from 60 to 100 beats per minute. Sometimes your doctor might also refer to your pulse. As you might know, your heart forces your blood through your arteries, which can be felt at certain points of the body where these arteries are located very close to the surface of your skin. Like your neck, the inside of your elbow and your wrist. Which brings us to the last vital sign, your respiration rate. Or in other words, the number of breaths a person takes per minute in rest. This should be about 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Now these vital signs are often basic but important medical indicators to track someone's recovery or track someone's health. If they are within the normal ranges, then great, you're doing okay. However, when they're off, then this might be a sign that you have an underlying medical problem and more medical examination or research is necessary. This can be done with a wide range of blood tests. First of all, these blood tests can be aimed at different components of every cell in your blood. So red blood cells, white blood cells or hemoglobulin, which is a protein within the red blood cells that carries oxygen to organs and tissues or carbon dioxide back to your lungs. Furthermore, blood tests might also be done to check your metabolic activity, your thyroid function, your heart's function, your cholesterol, blood clotting, your hormone balances, inflammation and the presence of certain infections like an STI. Now, all these tests you do need to be within a certain range to classify as a normal, healthy result. However, if they aren't, then this can be a sign for an underlying medical problem and often more research is necessary. One thing is important to know though, if you do enough tests, you will find deviating results. And this is not necessarily a reason for panic. So if we go on, besides blood tests, there are many more medical tests that can be done, hopefully, to confirm good health or to determine an underlying medical problem. The options are almost endless, but some common examples are pulmonary function tests, which can show how well your lungs are working, an ECG, which checks your heart's rhythm and electrical activity, a cardiac stress test, which measures your heart ability to respond to external stress, an ultrasound examination, x-rays, CT scans, MRI scans, endoscopy, which is a medical procedure where a viewing tube, an endoscope, is used to directly observe certain organs, physical examination by medical specialists, biopsies, and genetic testing. These tests can be very valuable, mostly when your doctor has a strong suspicion that something is potentially wrong. These tests should then be used to either verify a medical condition or to reject it. And again, I strongly want to stress that if you undergo enough of these tests, some incidental findings will be found. Therefore, they should only be done if your doctor has a serious suspicion something is wrong. So we have focused on vital signs and extensive medical testing, but luckily there's a way easier way to look and observe if someone is healthy. And this is found in someone's lifestyle. So do you follow a healthy, balanced diet? 
consisting out of low levels of saturated fats, salts and sugar, with plenty of fibers, fruit, whole grains and vegetables. Do you pee and defecate regularly? Do you maintain a healthy weight? Do you alternate between standing, sitting and walking all day? Do you avoid a sedentary lifestyle? Do you maintain a proper posture? And do you exercise at least 150 minutes each week? Do you rest enough? Do you allow your body to recover? Do you have a structured sleeping schedule? Do you practice proper bedtime hygiene? Do you wind down in the evening? And do you sleep about seven to nine hours each night? And do you avoid unhealthy habits like certain addictions, drinking too much alcohol or smoking? Then these can all be very healthy habits which contribute to a healthy life. Now I'm a huge proponent of making these videos as useful and practical as possible. So I hope you're learning a lot. If you do, then please let me know by clicking the like and subscribe button. This will mean the world to me and helps my channel grow so I can increase the medical knowledge of more and more viewers. It's free, consider it, and let's continue. Now the last important pillar of health is of course your mental health, which ties this whole video together. And mental health is more than just the absence of mental illnesses. A good mental health means that you feel good and function well in the world. You can cope with normal stresses in your life, you work productively, you realize your potential and you can contribute to the community. So, do you feel confident, optimistic? Can you deal with your own emotions and the emotions of others? Do you set goals? Do you feel good about yourself? Do you have self-esteem? Can you relax? And can you keep contact with your friends and family? And these are all signs of a good mental health, which forms the foundation of your life's functioning. And lastly, I want to end off with my own very humble and simple view on a good health. As good health is a very complex and nuanced term, which differs depending on the depth with which you are looking. And I like to keep it simple. So, if you feel happy without frequent extreme emotions, and if you feel pleasant in your body without severe physical complaints, and if you're able to complete daily tasks in your personal and work life, then these are, in my humble opinion, a huge sign that you're actually in good health. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you did learn something, if you find this video helpful, then please click the like and subscribe button, posting weekly medical videos, and it's free, so please do so. I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Sebastian, who is an university supporter. For those of you that can't get enough, check out the playlist in the description and check out the Instagram as well, at How to Medicaid. And I will see you next week with a new video. Stay healthy. Bye bye.